Good morning, CDN. Good morning. Let me make sure I don't get your feedback. You're good. All righty. Yeah, I don't want to keep you long because I'm uh, busy as well. Um, but I guess Probably just busier than me. <laughs> I just wanted to put a couple things out there. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff on your channel and others on the social media as a whole uh, about the whole TQL and other brokers that are bad and so forth. Mm -hmm. So if you have com legitimate complaints and factual evidence that you were being in truly impacted by a broker, whether it's a shipper or a broker, I'd like to see the letters, the emails that were written to the management requesting a, a meeting with a specific agenda so they can get their side of the story and identify whether they're willing to change their habits. And if not, then don't use them. So I would like to see those letters, those emails that you were professionally crafted, politely not yelling at them, but saying the facts that and uh, requesting a meeting where you've sent 10 times to request a meeting and mm -hmm. the, not a response, nothing. I bet you how many, how many have done that? Well, it, it's interesting to say that because the rate per mile masters Facebook page, uh, Chad Boblet, he always preaches. If you have a problem with a broker, go, go approach that broker. You can find contacts. You can get higher up in the office and, and, and a lot of people, Chad helps a lot of people resolve a lot of issues with brokers because of, of the very thing that you're saying, you know, and then once, once, if the, if, if the issues that you're having with the broker, once, it, once you know that they're not going to resolve or they, they still beat you down, then you just don't use them anymore. And, and in a lower volume market, like we're in, that becomes a little bit harder, you know, so because that one particular broker might have 90% of the loads in the area. So, you know, it, it becomes an issue there. And then well, do you want to, oh, go well, ahead. I was going to no. say, well, you can't exist in this world of trucking space mm -hmm. without having to interact with a broker ever, depending on the mode and the style of business you did. If you come out and you get your own shippers and you run your own gamut and you've done your own thing, you don't have to deal with a broker at all. You don't have to. I would say, if you are frustrated with brokers and hate us brokers, the energy that you take that it takes you to go on social media and complain about it, call the call those direct shippers, the people that will help you get get you a step closer to making the money you want with the people you want. It's a choice because it's a free market. You don't need brokers, pure and simple. That's the reality. But those that do, I'll get onto the thing about posting rates so that we can cut, make sure we keep it tight. But I'd say I cannot emphasize. I spent three hours with DIY showing tactics, how to improve your trucking business. I've spent numerous times on here giving tips, how to improve your business and how many people have made any, have taken any of those steps. How many have in the past year, if you didn't, if you were a one truck MC holder, how many of you added a website you didn't have before? How many of you added your link, fixed your LinkedIn profile? How many, like if you're a trucking company, because you're an, you have your own MC authority. So whether you're one truck or hundred trucks, it doesn't matter. You're a trucking company in the eyes of the FMCSA. If you're a trucking company and if you're, if you, I'll put it this way, how many phone calls did you get last week for people calling for your truck? They found you on the internet. So basically what steps have you done to get yourself away from brokers, to push yourself away? That's what I would say. And then to the point of the other day, um, we got into a thing about posting rates. Well, there's lots of different reasons. One, some shippers, they email their freight to say five, seven, eight brokers, and it's a bid system. So you have to, I, I can tell you. So I have a load that is the market is low priced a hundred percent because of the shipper. Why? What do they do? They've, they emailed out to five or six of us. And they want us to fight to the bottom. The, you can say, I got this driver. He's got 15 years experience. He's excellent, perfect safety record, all of this stuff. And I give him a price. And if another broker has a cheaper price, guess who gets the load? The cheaper price. Always. That This shipper is 100% price driven. Unless there's been the odd urgent load 
then they're worried about transit times. But everything is price driven. So that's one of that's the first reasons why some brokers won't post a rate because they're in competition to multiple brokers and they, they want to keep their cards themselves. That's pure and simple. So, you know, it's a competitive market. So sometimes some brokers don't want to post the rates. Number two reason, the load is complicated. So they, they don't want to just post a rate because they know so many carriers sort a load board by price. And even if they post it as a high price or a low price, without knowing the details, sometimes you you don't understand the whole, just seeing the price without understanding the details. Uh, if all, all if a carrier just looks at the price and passes it on, that's not the carrier they want. That's why they don't post the rate because I have many loads like that. That And also the sister company in Canada, which is Loadlink of DAT, right? Mm -hmm. They're the same companies. In Loadlink, you cannot post a rate. There's no box to post the rates. Wow. How, how about them apples? So I didn't know that. Yeah. You know how the, the box is so short. And you know how many people, they'll call and say, uh, I, I post things and the box is like 160 characters that you can put text about the load. Mm -hmm. And half of the people that call me, they don't even know how to read the column to see the attributes. And I say, well, do you, did you see that? No. Oh, I, well, look at the, don't you see the description? Where's that? Like I keep saying, if you want to be a dispatcher on the load boards, on a computer, or on your phone, you have to learn how to navigate this stuff. So learn how to read, find the notes. Where is the information about the loads? So the point is, one, they don't post the rates because it's a competitive bid and they don't want to reveal their price. Because I've had where I've been, I'm, I'm on a load board like this and all of a sudden some carriers say, hey, I see the same load posted by three or four other brokers. I'd rather book by you. I called two of these brokers. This is the price they're doing. I'm willing to do it for this price. Rob, you go bid it and try to get this, this load because I'd rather it goes with you. So mm -hmm. I've had that. It goes back. It does. It, you know, it doesn't take long for things to get exposed. They don't post the rates, but I've had other carriers tell me what other brokers are willing to pay. And I, you know, so that's the summary. It's a competitive thing. Two, the load is complex. So they don't want to post a rate because there's lots of details, maybe multiple stops, high value goods and so forth. Right. Number three could be the way their TMS integrates. So they may or may, they may, or may not want that. Some shippers may, may even know that you could post the rate. Some shippers may have told brokers they don't want them to post the rates. They don't want to reveal that. So, you know, there's some different reasons why. And at the end of the day, if you want, ask the broker, why don't you post your rates? But a lot don't. So I think that if you want to continue to work with brokers, then you need to find different brokers. There's, I can tell you that there's hundreds, if not thousands of brokers around the United States that do not even post half of their freight on the load boards. They have network of carriers. Cause I'll tell you from my own experience, just last week, if, if you get five loads, 10 loads from a shipper, brokers are going to call their network of carriers first. If I can call you Steve, Mm -hmm. And say, I've got these five loads going here to here and we have a relationship. You know, these loads, boom, I've given you five loads. I didn't have to deal with 25 to 30 carriers to deal with one load here, one load there. They're going to batch out as much as you can. So when you're trying to compete as one truck operator, even if you had the best service, you're doing all the right stuff. Some brokers are going to, and you say to them, yeah, call me with your freight and all this. And they call you say, Hey, I got five loads for you. Well, I've got one truck. They're sure they'll give it to you because you're doing a good job for them. But ultimately the brokers are looking for way when they have, if it's a mid-sized volume, like if, it, if they only have one load from that shipper and you got one truck, that's a perfect match. Mm -hmm. But if you're a broker that is getting five loads of PO of five, then they're going to want to batch that out because that's, that's how they avoid those one and dones. Yeah. The, um, your brokerage, I think I've only seen loads posted twice in the time that I've been aware of, of, of your brokerage, um, you know, that, you, that you're an agent for. So, I mean, that, that, that goes now, uh, RD has, uh, so are rates higher on loads where rates are not posted? Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. I agree with that. Sometimes, sometimes not, maybe not, maybe it's less, but it's because they're going with carriers that they can rely on. 
and they can get it booked fast because it depends. It all depends on the circumstance. Like some brokers are out there where they're getting the freight days in advance, weeks in advance. Other brokers are literally the way that works. And again, if you start working with direct shippers, you'll find this out. Some shippers work that today's Monday morning, you wake up and there's an email and they got 10 loads today or today for today and tomorrow. So they, that shipper has blasted that email out to five, 10 brokerages and all the brokers are out there fighting to secure some of those loads. That's the bane of the, that's the bane of the bid market, right? Uh, that that's the bane of it. But I can tell you, there's other brokers out there that are moving high value stuff, specialty things that are not on the load boards. They're finding, they're finding carriers. So are you, are, that's the question you have to ask yourself. Are you findable <laughs> on the, uh, you know, if I looked up dry vans in a certain state, does your name come up as a possible choice to compete against other, if there's mid-sized carriers in your town, are you one of the carriers that are listed there? Right. If you're not, you need to get, the, whether you're working with brokers and you hate brokers, but I would say that if you're really hating on brokers, like if you really just, then number one is cancel your load boards. And there's plenty, plenty of freight to get out there from other carriers that have excess loads. Call up all the mids. You don't have to go to the megas, but you can go to the midsize carriers and ask them about their brokerage, their internal brokerage for midsize and start just if you hate brokers this much get off of it because <laughs> that's it like why why are we wasting so much time on this it's really simple it's a free market and if you truly have legitimate factual evidence that you are being not handled correctly or you feel that you know the business actions that they're that you're doing you have three you have multiple choices one just stop using them period to, and pass the word along two you set up a meeting to get why are they doing this and see their actions. And if they don't change, then again, you can stop them. And if you feel it's really, there, if there's legal matters involved, well, then I guess you can involve your legal departments or your lawyer, hire a lawyer to help you and, and mitigate it. But, and you can report them to the FMCSA. You can go to your, like, there's, there's a bunch of ways that you can do things, but it's a matter of what path do you want to go down? What's, what's going to gain? Is it going to, if it's going to help your business in the long run, sure. Then take that path. But I'd say if you're just out here saying, oh, I hate the broker, I hate the broker. That's fair. You can say, I hate banks, right? <laughs> I hate banks. <laughs> like, does it like, so when, when the rates were, when you guys were saying that the rates were four or five bucks a mile and you looked at the day at the, at the averages, they were double two to three times the, the averages. Did anyone complain? See, if I recall, um, there was complaints about broker transparency right at the start of the vid times. And then it all of a sudden, when the things flipped around and all of a sudden there was supply shortages and the prices skyrocketed, somehow that dissipated. And now that the rates come back down, it's come right back up. So there's obviously, you know, what is, what's going to make the carriers happy? They're saying the brokers are the biggest problem. Is it the brokers or is it the shippers? Combination, maybe, right? Um, but we know that the shippers are trying to, when they can save money, they're going to save money. They're like, why would, when you hear about these uh, companies that have been shut down, that, you know, just recently, in the last couple of weeks, there's been some, you know, 200, car 200 drivers and employees, you know, the whole company shut down because they lost the contract. Mm -hmm. So did those shippers, come to those carriers saying, Hey, you've been with us this long. This is the price we've been paying you. We've been slammed with so much lower rates that we have no choice, but we're going to give you 60 days to extend our, you know, to finish out the contract. Uh, so you have time to recover and, and make other plans, but unfortunately we're having to find alternate path. but they, the shippers themselves, the contracts that, that one lady who had the video, literally they woke up and they done the loads that were on their trucks. They had to finish delivering. All new loads, there was 20, 30, 40 loads pending to be booked, canceled, assigned to the new carrier. So the shipper shut down 200 people. So where's all the bashing about shippers? How come we're not bashing? All these trucking companies have been recently shut down. And look back in the last three years, just type up trucking, trucking businesses bankrupt, trucking businesses shut down. There's hundreds, hundreds. And look at the reasons. Look at... Uh, Lakeville Motor Express or, uh, yeah, the, no, um, 
It's not Lakeville, but there's an LME and there was, that was Lakeville. There's another one up in the North, but they were a company around for 45 years, LTL carrier. They got on the Amazon train and after they, they quickly, they lost a bunch of other stuff, shut down after 45 years. So that's a company that didn't deal with brokers. So I don't have, there's no answer. You have to just set your own path for your own business, pure and simple. Pretty much. Yeah. So, so I'll let, I'll leave it at that, but that's what I'd say is I think that if we're continued to do, uh, the bashing, sure you can, but I would say two things, the time that you spend on broker bashing, go work out a number two, the time you want to spend broker bashing, build up your business and make new relationships, pure and simple. You can hate the brokers all you want. You can put, you can make a doll of me, the voodoo doll of me in your truck and, and stand me around, <laughs> poke me. And I don't care what I am, what I am. I'm a broker and I know what I do. And I know the value that I bring to the industry. Some may perceive not some may, you know, whatever, just like a carrier. I can say there are a ton of bad carriers. They're shysters. They don't care. They just want to grab a buck, right? There's stories galore of shyster carriers holding loads hostages to brokers, putting loads in storage, and brokers have to pay thousands of dollars to get it out, all to protect their customers so their customer doesn't get involved. So this, you have to, I go with facts. So if you're bashing a broker and you feel that they're gouging you, whatever that definition is for your business, but if you feel there's gouging involved and you have factual evidence, either step up, call the shipper directly that's involved. If you know there's a customer that that broker has getting paid $4,000 and they're paying you $2,000 and you feel that's gouging, then either call that shipper directly. Even though you have that contract, just say, do you understand that that broker is gouging you? Right? Set, set, that, on, set that world on fire. I, I've known carriers that have actually done that and they've gotten the, they've, they've gotten the direct freight that way. Right. So if you feel that, then go set the world on fire and take that freight away from those brokers. If you truly have factual, where you have legitimate invoices, where you have, you know, you can see the customer's invoice at 4,000 and you have a load confirmation at 2,000 and you feel that that's gouging and you can walk into that shipper's door and say, do you realize what's going on? Then have at it because you got, you have the facts, but if you don't have the facts, I, I tread carefully because you don't know the facts of this. If you don't have those pieces of paper and you're going to call a shipper on that, hold on. Unless you have, you don't, you may not know the relationship between the broker and that shipper or what agreements and contracts, who knows? Maybe you don't know that maybe that broker took a big loss for the shipper and the shippers agreed to pay extra on these 10 loads. And that's to make up for something else that happened. Who knows? I can tell you I've made, I've had to pay losses on loads many, many times just recently. I paid uh, for a customer, the carrier failed to pick up. So I had to pay $600 extra to get a different carrier to pick it up and make the delivery on time. Did I recover that? No, that's a hundred percent on me, not even my company. So I can share stories. Oh yeah. I, what's, I, I, what's the, what's the point? Right. Yeah. No, that, that's, that's what I'm trying to do. I, I understand things from both sides. So, you know, there are brokers that I deal with and there are brokers that I won't deal with and there are brokers that have done me wrong and brokers that have done me right. So it's, 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 that's just the And, and you it. can, like I said, you don't need brokers. Just take it out of your context. You only deal with shippers. Set yourself up. If you, I'll make it like this. If you want to just deal with direct shippers, that's perfectly fine. And if you work in a specific industry, let me ask anyone on here that's listening. If you like to haul paper rolls, or you like to haul whatever food, food stuff. So do you have your tickets booked for that? So that industries associations show, just like your guys go into mats. Are you going to that medical supply associations, uh, national convention in Las Vegas? Do you have a booth set up there to advertise yourself? Or are you going to go around and, and meet and greet with all the people at that co conference? Have you done that? Are you, have you gone to that industry associations website and seeing all the members and that's your direct list of shippers for you to call, right? If you know a specific, if you, if you like hauling freight for a specific commodity, find that industry association, look up the membership, advertise in their weekly or monthly catalog, the, their newsletters and learn that industry, get your name in there. I'm giving you all the inside tips. 
that will solve your problem. You don't need to deal with brokers. You have a thousand ways to av avoid working for the broker, pure and simple. If you hate us, leave it. You don't, you don't need a load board. There's a lot of freight out there. I cannot emphasize enough. And if you want to work with brokers because you like the, the flexibility that it brings you and the fact that you can factor loads easy and all this good stuff that does come with it, then you just have to have your own set of standards and how you evaluate the broker. You set it up. Don't worry about the next driver because the next driver may have different standards. Your, it's your business. You set your standards for your business and choose the brokers you wish to work with that meet those standards. And if they don't, blacklist them. That's why you have a TMS system or a, a napkin list or some kind of list that you put as do not use. And just and there's you're going to find shippers the same way. So I'll leave it at that so that you can uh, you can close out. Thank you, CDN. Thanks for your words of wisdom. I appreciate you very much. Well, I don't think it really is words there, but it's just I think that we we just have to look at some of the more factual stuff and choose alternate paths. Not saying that there's not bad brokers out there, but I can also tell you, spend some time and you'll find some bad shippers. Yep. So. All right. Thank you, CDN. Everybody check out CDN's uh, channel. I put the link in the chat there. So I apologize. I've been super busy and I haven't had time to post. I do have lots of video ideas. I just, I've been really busy. I hear you, so. man. I hear you. So. so, all right. I'll talk to you later, my friend. Thanks. Have yep, a good bye. one. Appreciate the time. Yep. Hey, this is Snorlord. Thanks for watching this clip from one of my live feeds. If you don't mind, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, we try to go live and we try to do some recorded videos and uh, hit the thumbs up and it helps the algorithms, it helps the YouTube uh, Google gods. So thanks for, uh, thanks for watching.